Is it on? Oh, it's on now. Hi. How are you all? It, it, it looks, from what I can see, like y'all are anticipating somebody important. As I said in the first panel, this is not the Jen Dykes Comedy Hour. Let me introduce you to Mr. Richard Dean Anderson. It was, uh, it, it, by the time I 
the Stargate came into my life, um, I was I was ready to do other stuff than just be in front of the, the camera. I, I had to keep my interest somehow. Um, and blessedly, I, I had learned some lessons doing a MacGyver, which just beat me up to no end. Um, I have, you know, like I had back surgery, three knee surgeries, to, uh, one concussion, um, two broken arms. And that, that's not all from the show, but a portion of that is from, from the show. A lot of broken fingers from doing that. Um, I don't know if, if anyone keeps, uh, really pays attention to the inserts. Eventually, we started using um, uh, my brother's hands, which look similar, but they're much smaller, of course. But it's an Anderson thing. Um, uh, but my fingers uh, would, I, Swiss Army knives, you can't give me one and I won't play, and, and I'll play with it. I sliced both of these fingers almost off, playing around. Um, yeah, juggling knives, I never did that. I did learn how to throw a knife by, which is ridiculous because a Swiss Army knife is not balanced for throwing. It's, <laughs> those of you who are holding them know. But, um, yeah, and I'd break fingers all the time. So eventually they started looking too gnarly to go on camera, and we had to hire my brother to uh, do the inserts. Yeah. <laughs> um, when we found out that you were going to be coming this year, we posted on our uh, Facebook page to invite people to ask questions to kind of get a preemptive... Look out! <laughs> She owes me money. <laughs> and she asks, of your two most memorable characters, who is closer to you in personality? Uh, Jack O'Neill or Angus MacGyver? Did anybody see Legend? Yes. <laughs> to be honest with you, that it, the character that I created for Legend was more complex compilation of my grandfather um, on my dad's side and a lot of my own um, imagination basically but um, he was in it, through different periods of my life uh, that character those of you who haven't seen it too bad um, something to go watch <laughs> where can you find it Great question. Anybody? Netflix. Because I couldn't. Find really? It. Well, I had a ball doing Legend. It was uh, probably the most fun I've had in front of the camera uh, with a character. But as far as the two biggies, the uh, uh, guys, I, I think Jack O'Neill's got kind of this the sense of humor, snarky, sardonic, cynic. <laughs> The poor writers, poor Brad Wright and, and the guys just didn't know, in the early goings, they didn't really know what to do with me, but thankfully, this is, any of you getting into the business in any way, shape, or form, but especially if you want to produce, um, if you want an actor to learn his lines right away, be on time, uh, hit a mark, don't be late, etc., make him a producer. <laughs> because then he becomes responsible, he or she, becomes responsible for all those elements, uh, budgetary and the like. Um, and lost that point. Where, where was I going with that? Anyone? Oh, Jack O'Neill. <laughs> that, that was an Anderson moment right there. <laughs> Um, yeah, Jack O'Neill, it's a sense of humor. Uh, MacGyver is just too polite, I think. <laughs> we have a lot of MacGyver questions, actually, that all run together, which is pretty cool. So. You're all
They're all assuming that I have any semblance of a memory left over. Well, they have to do with the MacGyver Stargate crossover. Yeah. Oh. The line in the first episode about can't you just MacGyver it that the man is having to was that Ha ha ha. Okay. Does that suffice for everyone's answer? Okay. Yeah, it was adorable. Yeah. As I told Brad later. Okay. The other question was, did, did, was that a suggestion on your part? God, no. <laughs> no, as Amanda's, uh, I think, in cahoots with Brad Wright. Well, and we see the outtake from uh, the Antarctica, was it Antarctica episode? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the outtake where she says, my God, I'm trapped in an ice cave with a guy. <laughs> Was that the, the the first reference, or was that the same? No, that was that was one that wasn't actually in the show. It was an album. Oh that was yeah, on. yeah. The, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> sure. Uh, to what do you contribute the great success of the Stargate franchise? Um, seriously? Um, or not? <laughs> uh, don't give me that leeway, please. Um, Bottom line is that we had, uh, first of all, Stargate was a, um, uh, a movie, as you all know. Um, and it, that in itself brought an audience to, uh, you know, a, a kind of a culty, you know, one-shot uh, deal audience. Um, so when it became uh, a franchise or a, a series, we had uh, those folks kind of tuning in um, right away. And the other half of it was, I was told by uh, John Symes, who was, God bless him, um, hired me for uh, Stargate, but he said that the other half is going to come to see MacGyver, what he's doing next. So we had two factions to a combination of audiences that uh, got us off on the right, right foot. And I think the ultimately the cast um, the camaraderie, and the, um, the cohesiveness, and the, the sense of play that we we had. Um, kind of audiences were pretty comfortable with that, with that initial guest. In fact, I get comments um, uh, about that, about how like it just hasn't been the same since. You know, because they had Atlantis, and then was the last universe, universe right? <laughs> Universe is a different world altogether. Yeah. Well, worlds, I guess. Yeah. Different aliens, different. Yeah, I, I, did, I think it went off the air ultimately because it dealt with too too many parallel universes. I know I did an episode or two of it, and when uh, we were shooting it, I didn't have any idea what was going on. <laughs> Where I was, what I was doing, what it was, year, forget year, <laughs> what world? <laughs> no, I was, I think the audience has got lost eventually. It's a very heady show, but, uh, but there's a contingent that loves that as well. Yeah. The science guys, yeah. Um, something we always hear from other guests that we have is about behind the scene antics, pranks, and so on and so forth. He's shaking his head already. Do you have a favorite moment or, or silliness that happened behind the scenes? Or were you the one saying, stop? I mean, you're shaking your head. Me? Yeah, were you going to stop it, Chris? No. <laughs> no, the, I tried to keep it as loose as possible um, and as comfortable as possible for the actors and the crew. I sort of wanted to and this goes back to my earlier comment about uh, helping produce the show. Um, I kind of set the tone for the set, for the what went on on the set. Um, so it was imperative that I keep things as light and fun as possible. Because the hours that, you've all heard all this before, but the hours that a crew um, endures, um, the cast has the easiest time of all of the whole uh, 
echelon of, of people that put on shows like that. But um, you know, it, you don't want anybody saying, "Oh shit, I gotta go to work again." Sorry. Shoot, I have to go. <laughs> gotta go to that Stargate thing again now. I wanted them to want to show up and have fun, and uh, we kind of maintain that fairly well. So the antics, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't remember any of them really. It's all in the moment, you know. <laughs> um, this is from a hopeful. Do you know of any further developments in the Stargate franchise in process as of now? What? Do you know of any further developments in the Stargate franchise as of right now? No, why? Do you? Because they wanted to know. <laughs> oh. um, Honestly, I wish I could say, you know, maybe, but I can't. I, I can say that. Maybe. <laughs> but the likelihood is not so maybe. Um, I honestly don't know what, uh, how those guys are thinking. Um, I got asked to do the voice in a game, a uh, uh, Stargate game, but uh, that's as far as it went. As far as what? Just curious. Uh, don't worry. We, we've been hopeful for the, the Stargate games for the last few years. Oh, so. really? It, well, there was one that started, and it was like an online multiplayer thing, and then it didn't start. Or it not started, or whatever. I don't know. And then they were going to do a first-person shooter, and then it didn't happen. So we're still kind of waiting to see if that happens in any way, shape, or form. But you say, I got to ask to do the voice. I'm like, oh, really? Yeah, well, they wanted... Um, um, I almost said, they wanted MacGyver's voice to be doing the Stargate thing. He can fix it with a gym clip and a rubber band. Will you stop that? <laughs> okay. Now, cut that out. So, what do you guys want to talk about? of having Sea Shepherd as a charity now, or were you always interested in the sea? From Loretta Painter. Loretta. Loretta. And apparently I'm not loud enough for once in my life. I want to be called Loretta. Well, from? Loretta. Stand up, wave, hi. What was, oh, but we can't see. What was that reading from? Oh, I want to be called Loretta. What? Shh. Thank you. <laughs> What's that from? <laughs> Why am I up here? <laughs> I'll just feed you the stuff. You save me from myself. <laughs> so, Sheen Shepherd, Dragon Con does a lot with charity, so we're all interested in you and your charities and yeah. charity work. So tell us about it, a bit about it. Well, all the 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 conventions that I've done in my life, um, well, at least in this this life, um, I I set up a situation with my uh, my business management company that um, any of the monies, the fees that I would take from uh, from the conventions, um, I would just. I had set up a system where the monies would just go directly to uh, mostly Sea Shepherd, um, but also the, uh, yeah. the, the yeah. River Keeper, right. and uh, the other one that has been, the, the other big one that is kind of dear to my heart is the Art of the Brain, a very close dear friend of mine who has brain cancer and um, she's been running this this uh, event for so many years and um, so anyway that's uh, as far as being involved with uh, um, Sea Shepherd um, having worked at Marineland there was no, correla no correlation at all except that I am drawn to things of water yeah. I'm, I'm being from Minnesota where you know all the lakes are made that's one of our exports. And, uh, 
with the mosquitoes that go with them. Um, so I and I met Paul Watson in, in Alaska many many years ago, and I just hearing him speak about um, with the kind of passion that he has uh, about all things oceanic, but especially the whales, which is his. Um, yeah, I mean, that's his main thrust, his main love is uh, for saving the whales and the campaigns that they've been going on over decades, uh, almost two decades now. Just got my attention, initially got my attention because of the, of the way he presented it, but then the more I heard Paul speak, um, the more I listened to the content and then of course that sent me off into research and, I was hooked, so um, near and dear to my heart. And of course, River uh, Keepers Alliance is, is kind of self. I won't go off into that tangent. You got to stop me eventually, or I'll get all serious on you. Okay, serious works at times. Sometimes we need to. You know. Oh, but anyway, to to, to your point, okay. um, the uh, the monies that I make from this is the first type of uh, convention that I've done of this sort and it's uh, I, I just want to take the opportunity to thank anybody that's that's shelling out hard-earned money for uh, for a picture or whatever um, because it's going to it's filtering through me but that's just a business thing it'll go uh, to Sea Shepherd right <laughs> and suddenly it was like X number left and then there were 10 fewer and then 20 fewer than that and they were gone. What, what are those? The photo opportunities, you're taking photos with the fans and really? the signatures. As I understand it, you were doing it this morning. A little bit, yeah. A little the, bit? The, 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 People were very excited. We'll just well, I'm very polite, by the way. Thank you. Okay. Um, oh, I'm so proud of you guys. And I'm so sorry about the heat. I'll try to do something about it. I actually, I only have one kind of snarky, snotty-nosed, actor-thingy demand, and, uh, and it can't always work out, but I sweat like the Dickens, just just sitting, just, I have, the, my core is from Minnesota, so anything above, like, freezing, <laughs> yeah, freezing, um, I just pour out, and so um, I see some of you have got... <laughs> Coats on, for God's sake. <laughs> I don't understand you. I don't understand me either. It's okay. But I, I've always wanted to have a, a cold environment to, especially to talk, because you, you get into warm, as you all know. You just cold gust of wind up here on top of it. That's great time. Somebody fart? <laughs> cold gust. Cooper? <laughs> Coop. <laughs> Buddy. <laughs> No, you'll like this one. Ha I'm gonna wait till he finishes sipping. Okay, or not. How did you feel about being such a prominent character crush for Patty and Selma on The Simpsons? <laughs> I picked myself up off the ground. I said, no. Nah. 
oh, screw you. <laughs> no, I, I mean, seriously, it was one of those moments where, you know, something really good happens to you and you're kind of surprised by it. And you kind of get that shock of adrenaline in your stomach and your face goes flush and you release gas. <laughs> I had one of those moments right there, and I was, I was, it was like, yeah, and, um, but anyway, the, 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 what was the question? <laughs> now, of course, Selma, and, uh, Selma, I think I like better, she's a little rougher. Well, you, you inadvertently answered another question that I actually shuffled in the back of the pack, which was, who's the Simpsons fan, you or Jack O'Neill? But um, I think we kind of got some impression there. Well, I, you know, brought brought along some aspects of uh, like and dislike and love and stuff along to my characters. <laughs> it's so easy. I, like during MacGyver, I, I was starting um, a very short-lived racing career. Car. Um, Somebody asked about that. And uh, I was in. So consequently, um, you know, every weekend I go out to the, this track and it's a, like a formal amateur racing thing, although the, their money was available as well. And um, of which I won none. But, <laughs> but um, so anyway, we made uh, the love of car racing a part of MacGyver's personality as well. And it's just, you know, it's, along the way, uh, producers and writers have found certain things that I do in real life, <laughs> in real life, um, interesting enough to, to make a part of a character. So, and it, because of the sh two big shows that I've been on have lasted forever, um, seven plus years from a guy for eight years. SG1 had 10, we've had 17 seasons total. So are you still involved in the auto racing business? Nah, not so much. I mean, I, I still get up at 3.30 a.m. Western Pacific time to watch the Formula One racing. And, and uh, don't tell me when the Belgian thing is coming up. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm off now. Yeah. Involved in Formula One now. I love racing. Um, not a big. I'm sorry to say this in this part of the country. But USAC is no. Um, NASCAR is. I, I follow it a little bit, but I'm not so attracted to the, the circle stuff. But I don't know. They're, I don't think they're tapping into the, the, the driver's uh, totality. <laughs> what, it what it takes to be a driver, you can turn right as well. <laughs> I don't know about your cars, but my car, I like it. So we have a just for fun, and they even wrote just for fun. Do you? Well, I'll wait. Go for it. I just don't want you to have a spit take here. Just for fun, do you miss the mullet? <laughs> Why are you people making me ask these questions? I keep getting that look. That's a good question. Um, I don't miss it on my head. <laughs> what I miss about it is possibly the ability to grow it. <laughs> that makes sense? Like it's. Oh, I, I do. I've lucked out in the Anderson. Uh, I have three brothers, and I'm out of all of them, I have the the most hair. Um, let's see. I was gonna say. No, yeah, there's, there's. But I want to embellish on. Oh, please! <laughs> I thought it was a yes no, question. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, um, no, I don't miss it so much. In fact, I think it's kind of funny to see. So the hockey players are still. The dreg, the dregs of um, of Mulletville. <laughs> Anybody got one in here? Oh Lord, do we have a mullet? Come on, be proud. I don't see any hands. No mullet. 
That shows you just how popular it will remain. Um, when you got involved in Stargate in the beginning, did you have any idea how big it would be or what the potential might be? No. No, not at all. It's, well, it's... Although we had a two-year uh, or a two-season pickup, I believe that's how it did, uh, out of the gate, um, you never know. You really never do know. Um, there can be, in fact, Stargate eventually uh, met its demise bec um, because of, on the whim of one guy at, um, was it Showtime or no? Uh, Hang him! MG, well, yeah, MGM, but beyond that, the, the, anyway, one guy um, wanted his own um, show to be on, so he, you know, nah, let's get rid of this franchise that's been successful forever. I was yanking. You have a microphone? I have a microphone. Mm -hmm. What are you being told? Just yell it out. They're trying no. to help you out from backstage. No, no, this was one of the cable versions. Anyway, it doesn't matter. He was an ass. Uh, as a <laughs> political, political. Oh, by the way, uh, let me take a moment. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> like I haven't been. <laughs> uh, any of you that follow me tweeting, yeah. please, I've... I've gotten a little, not caustic lately, but I, and this won't come off right either. Um, I'm, I'm not a Republican, let's put it that way. I don't want, seriously, I don't want to offend anybody, but I've been, in my tweets, I, um, you'll, if anybody knows who uh, Kate Ritter is, she's, uh, runs the, um, the Anderson, um, it's a good website. And anyway, she's become a f dear friend over the years, but she gave me some, just yesterday, because I was tweeting things like, I can't stand it anymore. Paul Ryan's and uh, yeah, you know, doesn't know what he's talking about. He's lying! And then, um, then uh, Old Mitt came on last night, and I got sick to my, st I got nauseous. <laughs> Listening to this, uh, am I offending anybody yet? I'll try harder. No. Um, but anyway, my, my tweets have been a little negative. Let's put it, put it out there. It's been, they've been negative. Whereas where I sh what I should be doing is being positive about getting Obama um, reelected. That's my, my soapbox thing, though. But vote anyway, no matter who, who it's for, just yeah. vote. For Obama. <laughs> Thank you. This message not paid for. <laughs> As an actor, do you ever really miss the process of immersing yourself in a long-time character? What, what's that? Seven, long, eight years. Oh, you mean, um, yeah, one character over a long, over a long period, period of time. time right? um, I do, actually, and only recently has it started to affect me a little bit. I, um, I left Stargate uh, two years before it was canned by that guy. Um, be, because... Um, Delicately. Uh, I'm a single dad, let's put it that way. And I wanted to um, help my daughter grow up in the early parts of her, her life. She was like one and a half, two years old when the mom went to LA and there was all that drama going on. Um, what was the question? <laughs> As an actor, do you ever really... Oh, yes. So anyway, <laughs> it became imperative that I'd be a part of her life as she was growing up. 
So it became so difficult for me to fly back and forth um, on a, doing a series rather than doing it because it was nine months long was the, the shooting schedule and I had to negotiate special release times and all that. Um, so if I had been doing a film, say, it would be a block of time, I could bite the bullet for that and then be home. But um, doing this series, the, uh, the nature of the doing a series is not that accommodating. So flash forward, and my daughter, any of you have heard me speak or about uh, Wiley, you know she's the reason I'm alive, basically. But she uh, she finally said to me, she's 14, turned 14 in August, and she came to me at one point, she said, Dad, you know, I'm okay now. You can go back to work if you want. <laughs> what a kid, come on. I mean, how perceptive could that, <laughs> here, I just pour my heart out in front of you all. Um, but it was, it was one of those moments where I realized, my kid gets it, she, she's like on my side. But you, know? you did all right. Well, just, anyway, so, um, I'll be looking for you. So. As far as the venue, um, I love the, the process of, of making um, a series. It's like a perpetual... I think doing, a f doing films, unless they're, you're one of those top echelon guys that can pick and choose and set a, you know, a, a five or ten year schedule of films to do, um, you know, it's kind of few and far between. Uh, so I, I like doing a series, so it's all, it's evolving and happening like that. But, yeah, I, I do kind of miss it right now. Well, on that... Right now, I mean. Right this second, he'd rather be there. Thanks. <laughs> um, on that note, if you were offered the chance to work with any actor, living or deceased, who would it be? Of course, we would have to, you know, stipulate that they wouldn't be deceased while you're working. <laughs> this is a sci-fi fantasy convention with the zombie tracks. So <laughs> I have worked with some stiffs. <laughs> That's not true. They were at least breathing. I, um, well, probably Jonathan Frakes. I'm kidding. That's an interesting response. He's one of my uh, best friends. I have two best friends, and he's one of them, let's put it that way. There's uh, a, a guy named Will Calhoun. He's a writer. He used to be one of the executive producers for Friends, which launched him into. You'll see his name at the beginning of a lot of crawls. Anyway, um, situation comedies. Um, I, I don't, well, at this point, I'd like to work with anyone, but um, I don't know. Maybe did anybody watch um, uh, the speeches last night? Say, nobody saw Clint Eastwood. Somebody did. <laughs> well, I don't want to work with him now, but... <laughs> no, I, I love him. But, um, kind of showed his age last night, I think. Um, probably Jack Nicholson, for sure. Um, Juliette Binoche. Anybody? <laughs> William Shatner. Really? <laughs> I'm kidding. I love old Bob. Is it Bob? Bill. 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 <laughs> we'll call him old Bob. Sure. Alright, we've got time for probably just two more questions. Oh, come on! Fuss at the guy with the placard that just disappeared before I said fuss at the guy with the placard. What's that? Let's, let's. All right. As long as you um, want to stay here, I'll stay. 
just don't whoop anymore. <laughs> to return to any of your previous roles, who would you take and, or wait, would you take it and which role would it be? Who did you enjoy being the most? Or well, that legend guy. <laughs> Nicodemus legend. Ernest Pratt. He was fun. That was nice and quick. If you could have any alien tech from Stargate, what would you want from Laura Boyle on Facebook? Lar Flynn boy? No. Are you out there, darling? Um, Laura, are you here? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I heard yeah. It's Laura, right? She's over there. What? If you could have any alien tech from Stargate, what would you want? Alien tech? Technology. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I'm yeah. new here. Kids these days. <laughs> um, I don't know. I need some examples. Um, invisibility. I've always wanted to be. I know that's kind of simple, but time travel. Probably time travel. Invisibility. This is a question that just came up here that I'd really like to hear your answer on. We do a lot, like I said, with the charity work here at Dragon Con, and with the Stargate group, it kind of got kicked off with Don Davis in 2008 for ah, the American Heart Association at the time. Bless you. The question that's just been handed to me is what is your favorite memory of Don? Aww. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Way to lighten the evening. I, this, this, <laughs> but it's real close to all of us. I mean, we all, yeah. you know. No, Don, it's just one of the most lovely gentlemen I've ever gotten to work with. He was probably the most effusively complimentary human being I've ever met. I always like going, if I was like feeling insecure or anything, um, anything negative, I just go in the general vicinity of Don and he just, this litany of compliments and like, oh man, I remember and well, you're so great, you do so much, and oh God, you're beautiful. And, uh, oh, and the acting thing you did the other day was so great. Keep going down. Keep going. <laughs> he was just, um, and nothing not genuine about it. He was just really a, a straightforward, good old boy. And um, uh, do nothing but listen to him all day to weave his stories of the Ozarks. I think is oh, I'm just a just an old Southern boy. That's the way Lord made me. That's the way I am. Shit. Great <laughs> <laughs> to No, he, he wouldn't swear, but bless, bless John. And uh, even further back for me is Dana Elkar, who played. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. It's my partner on uh, MacGyver, so, and bless his heart as well. Yeah. Well, anything else you want to leave us with? Uh, we're wrapping the panel. Um. Yeah. Where are you going? We're not done. Come on, boy. No. I want you all to just, um, well, first of all, that whole voting thing, I don't want to be a pain in the butt, but this is probably the largest room of human beings I'll be able to talk to before, before voting time. But... You know, it's uh, it's corny and to say so, and it's like everybody's. But you gotta, you just gotta do it for all the reasons that other people bore you with, and I won't right now. But do it. <laughs> and, uh, if it were different, if we were in a different uh, format, I'd, I'd I'd spew why I think uh, one guy's <laughs> would work better over the other, but. Um, uh, and the only other thing, what I'll leave you with is uh, for all you to just take a good look at my t-shirt here. <laughs> no, it's that I've lost weight. <laughs> I actually have not, but I promise I will. <laughs> well, we've had fun today, or I've had fun today, and we're going to see you again.